You'll see from the first slide that Michael and I get the pictures from, this, from the same photo shooting. Basically, <laughs> whomever you see wearing red belongs to the same militia or gang. So in the previous slide that Michael showed, some people were wearing like red bandanas. It's the same group. They're very good for pictures. Right. <clears throat> we're going to focus on two main regions, the Indian Ocean uh, high-risk area and the Gulf of Guinea. But before I start, I'll just say a couple of things about us for those of you who don't know us. We're one of the largest private maritime security companies in the world. Our background is from the Hellenic Navy. We're a Cypriot Greek company. We are considered to be the most widely approved and certified company in our industry. And our current experience comes from the exposure that we have in both regions by 180 ships per month in the Indian Ocean and about 20 operations per month in West Africa. Those operations average six to 10 days, so it's significant uh, exposure to the area of operations. The global incident map and the slides you will see are screenshots taken from our portal on the 23rd, so they're pretty up to date. Shows us that you know, maritime aggression is all over the world. The most affected region, of course, is Africa, followed by Southeast Asia, which is expected. But then we have the Americas, and not a lot of people know that there is maritime aggression in that region of the world. And I have a lot of people talk to me and say, I manage and operate bulkers. I run no danger, so I don't need to see you. Well, actually, it's not like that, because in 2018, the most widely attacked vessel, type of vessel, was the bulker. Then followed by the product tanker, and then the container vessels. And container vessels are very high and very fast. People think that they're not very risky, but they are. So quickly moving to the Indian Ocean region. In the past year, we've had 31 reported incidents. And again, these are confirmed incidents by the ICC and IMB. The Red Sea choke point to the Gulf of Aden, which is the Bab el-Mandeb, sees most of the action. And it's, it's, just, it's not just Somali-based piracy. It's mostly the spillover of the conflict in Yemen to the maritime domain, which uh, brings acts of terrorism targeting merchant vessels. However, there's a lot of smuggling going on in that region. And generally, on the water, there is a lot of uh, criminality. So we had a change. In 2018, the Houthis were targeting port facilities. And they targeted Jizan specifically by deploying two remotely controlled skiffs laden with explosives. Uh, it's, an interesting, uh, it's an interesting concept. However, the Saudi Navy and the coalition forces managed to deter this attack, but very short of the actual terminal. So security in that region is upped. This is something that I hate. The HRA is shrinking again. So this slide shows the original HRA in purple, purplish. And then the square is the current. The dotted line is what the high-risk area of the Indian Ocean is going to be as of May 1st. A lot of conversation around why this is happening. And I'm happy to share insights, but because I'm being recorded now, I'm not going to speak about those openly. You can come to me and we can discuss it. As you might have seen, the previous, um, the Somali Basin high-risk area is moving further to the shore, closer to the shore. But just a while ago, we had the KSL Sydney that was attacked 340 nautical miles east of Mogadishu. And the only reason that this vessel remained safe was because it had an armed security team on board that fired back and basically saved the vessel. So the truth about the Indian Ocean region is that Somali-based piracy is dormant, but it's not extinct. It's still there. The Yemen conflict does overspill into the maritime domain, and that's why we see acts of terrorism in the Bab el-Mandeb. There are a lot of smugglers, as we said before, taking uh, the opportunity of that state uh, in the Bab el-Mandeb to go on and do their business. And it's not just weapons and narcotics, it's also people. The naval presence in the region has dropped. However, EU NAFOR has now four vessels. Just three months ago, they only had two. So I think this indicates that there are serious concerns about an uprising Somali piracy. Otherwise, why send more ships to the region to protect uh, the area? The area is shrinking, but you have more naval assets. So something's going on here. 
And of course, the conditions in Somalia have not changed. They are still conducive to pirate action group activity. And as we like to say, it's not game over yet. And uh, we need to remember images like this and stories from seafarers that have been affected in order to be proactive and not complacent. So we've all been working for a more secure Indian Ocean for trade and our mariners. And it is agreed that armed security is what has changed the tide. So ever since that was deployed in the Indian Ocean, we've seen numbers continuously drop to where we are today. But for us, uh, we take pride in making sure that everybody goes home. So we need to carry on being vigilant about security in the Indian Ocean. This is the message. However, not all companies like us are um, very legitimate and very proper. So whomever you contract, you need to do a very serious due diligence check on them to make sure that they operate in a legal manner. You need to look for quality and reliability, reputation, the accreditations, et cetera, and so forth. I'm moving on to the Gulf of Guinea now, and I'd like to stay on this slide just a little bit to see that this is officially from the IMB report for 2018. So basically they said that they believe 48% of all incidents in the Gulf of Guinea go underreported. I would prefer if I saw unreported because the percentage is higher. However, that would give us 152 incidents in the Gulf of Guinea alone for 2018. This is the um, yearly image, the past 12 months of activity in the Gulf of Guinea. So from 22 attacks and to 26 hijackings, you can see that there's a lot happening there. Of course, this is no secret. Most of the activity is in the eastern part of Nigeria, the oil producing region. It's not necessarily because it sees more traffic, but these are where the militants, the gangs, the pirates and the maritime aggressors are. Looking at two incidents, this is um, the MSC Mandy. It's a container vessel which was attacked and uh, there was an incident of kidnap and ransom. So crew were taken from this vessel. The history of Ivory caused a lot of concern because it happened more west than most of the incidents that we see. So it's basically here. It was hijacked, crew members were taken, and everybody kind of freaked out because it happened off Lome. And that is not generally considered to be a very high risk area. But this is one of the slides that I absolutely love because it shows, one, the exportation of the operations and the capabilities of Nigerian armed gangs or pirates into other countries that have less security than Nigeria. And we can see that in 48 hours, they managed to hijack three vessels, kidnap 15 crew. One crew member was injured. And one of the vessels that was involved in these attacks was an LPG carrier that was at the time bunkering. So imagine the scenario there, the LPG bunkering, bullets flying around. It's not a very safe situation. What people need to look at when they operate in West Africa is of course proper risk evaluation a good understanding of the actual threat that their vessel or operations are going to face in West Africa. Realistic risk mitigation measures. You don't need everything. We have people come to us and ask for crazy things, drones, satellites, this, that. You don't need all that. You need exactly what that operation has to have in order to be safe. But how do you get there? You get there firstly by working with a legitimate provider. It's not just pirates. You have to take care because there are a lot of security companies in West Africa that are fraudulent. So you need to do, again, your due diligence there. To build a solid relationship with that security provider that you have chosen so that together you can design exactly what's best for your operation. The principle is always to deploy security, of course. See, slides I was telling you before, again, red. So same guys. For the future in Nigeria especially, we don't expect anything different than what we already know. Piracy and maritime aggression in the Gulf of Guinea are always going to be present because the conditions on that body of water um, just help the, the gangs, the criminals to do this. So the oil export revenues, when they don't reach from the federal government, 
the local governments, then the local government will release a militia in order to do attacks to international interests, so as to put pressure on the federal government to actually pay the money. And we are all caught in the middle of all this. Militias and crooks are there, of course. Corruption and insecurity is in country always. And poverty leads to the need to escape it, right? Everybody wants a better life. But for these people there, there's no other opportunity. Basically, they have to turn to criminality. They have no other option. So it's always going to be in that region. It's not just ships that need protection. This is the largest FLNG the world has ever seen, and we were lucky enough to be contracted to protect it. And this was in an entirely different part of the world. This was in Southeast Asia on its sailing from where it was built to where it's operating. And nothing, nothing happened at all to this uh, humongous asset. So adequate protection will lead to a smooth operation. And this is the FPSO Egina that we were contracted to safeguard the delivery of the FPSO into Lagos and then the sailing from Lagos to its operating position, which is 110 nautical miles south of Boni. The interesting thing about this FPSO is that it was receiving daily threats from the Niger Delta Avengers, who are the most active militant group in Nigeria. However, because of the security it received, nothing at all has ever happened to it. So risk is apparent. Of course, we all understand this. There are ways to successfully mitigate risk in order to avoid loss. And the key message here is don't allow yourselves to become victims. Don't allow your business to become a victim of all these crazy people. Thank you very much for your attention.